when a woman gets pregnant, she needs to take care of herself and her baby. Hence, there's a need for antenatal care, which happens to be our topic for today. Hello and welcome to Healthline TV show with me, Stella, your host and midwife. This show is proudly sponsored by Moose Condoms and Home Fresh. If you are playing, play it right, and with Moose, you always play it right. Moose Condoms are available in all pharmacy shops. For bulk purchase, contact 544 343678. Let's go for a breather. When you come back, we start our discussion on antenatal. Welcome back. Do you think it's important to go for regular antenatal checkup? Do you think the numerous lab investigations are important? Nesdaina is here to educate us more on antenatal care. So stay with us. Nesdaina, you are welcome. Thank you. Hope all is well. God's grace. How are your pregnant fine. women? They're all doing amazing. All right. So what is antenatal care? Antenatal care is the care given to pregnant women and adolescent girls who get pregnant by skilled health professionals throughout the pregnancy for the best health outcome for both the mother and the baby. And when can a pregnant woman start antenatal care? You start antenatal care once you realize you're pregnant. Most often, people get to know they're pregnant between the sixth and the eighth week of pregnancy. So you do a pregnancy test at home, or you enter any clinic or a pharmacy to get a pregnancy done. A pregnancy test done, then you know you're pregnant, and then immediately you start antenatal care. Then now, uh, why is it important for a pregnant woman to go to antenatal clinic? Antenatal care is very, very important because it helps to identify any complications that may arise in the pregnancy. Right. Okay, and it also helps to prevent some sort of complications that may arise in the pregnancy. Well, can you mention some of the complications that may arise? For instance, anemia in pregnancy. Okay. When you come to antenatal care, you're given guidance as to what to do so that you don't develop anemia in pregnancy. Your BPs are checked so that you don't develop pregnancy-induced hypertension. If you are home without attending antenatal care and then you, your BP begins to go high, you may not know. So once you come for antenatal care, your BP is checked and then if you are developing pregnancy-induced hypertension, which is a complication in pregnancy, okay. it will be detected on time and managed as such. Okay, and what are the regular schedule for antenatal care? For antenatal care, we used to do four visits, okay. okay? But this time it has been changed to a minimum of eight visits. Okay. So you expected that within the first 28 weeks of your pregnancy, you attend antenatal care monthly, then two weekly until you are 36 weeks, then weekly afterwards until you deliver. Okay, and is it the same as those pregnant women with a complication or who are high risk? For these schedules, they are for women with normal pregnancies without any other complication. Okay. But once complications set in, your midwife or obstetrician would have to alter the times you come for the antenatal visits. So for high risk women, it is dependent on your condition and in the healthcare provider taking care of you. And does it get to a point whereby pregnant women go to antenatal clinic weekly? Yes, it's possible. If the complications that have arisen is very severe, your midwife or the obstetrician would want to see you more often okay. than the normal. So as a newly pregnant woman, what are the processes that I will go through when I come to the antenatal clinic? Okay, once you, you're pregnant and you come for antenatal clinic, mm -hmm. the first thing we do is to confirm the pregnancy. Okay. You know, there are women who think they are pregnant but are actually not pregnant. Especially women who are anxious, so anxious to get pregnant. So they will come with stories like, I'm pregnant, I've done a test and blah, blah. So you would have to confirm the pregnancy. After this is done, mm -hmm. there are four main things we do. Okay. So we take the history, we do physical examinations of these women, we do laboratory investigations, then we educate them. With regards to the history, we would want to know your family history. We want to know whether there is any ailment in your family. 
for example, hypertension, diabetes, want to find out about any psychotic conditions in your family. And all of these things will help us anticipate possible complications or conditions that may develop. Okay. We also look at your social history. We want to know whether you take alcohol or you smoke. Okay. Because alcohol and then smoking isn't very good in pregnancy. Okay. We would also want to know your last menstrual period. And this will help us to calculate approximately how many weeks the pregnancy is and also the dates of delivery. We look at your past obstetric history, that is if you have delivered before. We want to know how the pregnancy went, we want to know how the delivery went, we want to know whether there were any complications that came up during the pregnancy. Because if you had any complications, there's a possibility that it may come up again in this pregnancy. So what would you do about it if the patient is having any complication? If she has complications. Previous, okay. There was a previous complications, they will have to put measures in place. For example, if the person had hypertension in pregnancy, in the previous pregnancy, it will make us alert. We we'll want to look out for a repeat of that in this pregnancy. Again, so we'll be looking at the BPs and then paying very close attention to such a patient. So meaning a patient with bad obstetric history or bad social history or anything, you will put the patient under high risk. Yes, we will. So meaning the antenatal schedule for this patient will be quite different from a patient without any history, any complication in previous pregnancy. Yes, we will. Okay. We would also want to know what is happening currently in this pregnancy. Whether you have any complaints. For example, you're not feeling well. We would want to know what exactly is happening to you so that we can manage that as well. So that is the part for the history taking. Then we do physical assessment of the pregnant woman. For antenatal visits, immediately you enter the room where the antenatal clinic is done. We look at you as you walk. We are looking at this so that we'll find out whether your pelvis is okay. If you are limping, it gives us a hint as to how your pelvis will look like. Oh, what is the pelvis? Can you explain it to us? Okay, the pelvis is the bony part of the woman. Around the, where, the waist, yes, where around oh, okay. your, your waistline. Right. That is where your pelvis actually is. Mm -hmm. And this pelvis is very important because if you're to deliver vaginally, the baby would have to pass through the pelvis to be delivered. So it's very important that we know how your pelvis is. So as you walk in, we look at your gait, the way you are, how tall you are, how short you are, whether you are limping or not, and then it gives us a clear idea as to how your pelvis may be. Okay, and then when you enter, we check your vital signs. Vital signs here mean we take your BP, okay. we check your height, and we check your weight. All these are done as baselines, so that in subsequent times when you visit, we would know whether you're developing any complication or not. Then, we also assess you from head to toe. We look at the color of your eyes. Before you talk about assessments, what's the importance of checking the weight during pregnancy? So we would have to know your, the weight you started with. Okay, so that if you're gaining too much weight, it will give us an idea. Then it means that either the baby is growing too big, or the water around the baby, which we call the lycor, is becoming too much. So we'd have to investigate to find out why you're gaining so much weight. Okay. Yeah. So you can continue with the examination, the physical examination. Okay, so we are looking at head to toe examination as well. So we look at the color of your eyes. So if you come to us initially and then the color of your eyes is white. And then subsequently we realize that you're developing yellowish eyes. It tells us something, that oh, something is happening. That's why we would have to do all of these baseline examinations so that when you are developing anything, we would know. So we look at your breast, we do breast examinations and we teach the mothers how to do self-breast examination. Okay. So that if there is any lump, any discharge, any discoloration anywhere, we would know. Then we look at the abdomen. On the abdomen, we would want to know how big the uterus, which is the womb where the baby is lying, is growing. If you have had any previous surgery, maybe a cesarean section or a laparotomy, there will be a scar there. So we would see that 
if you forgot to let us know, once we see the scar, we probe further to find out what exactly caused the scar. We also measure the length of the uterus and that will help us know approximately how many weeks the pregnancy is. And then we also examine the vulva. So we look at it if there are any, whether you have any discharges, whether there are any warts or any other infection around there, then we treat it as quickly as possible. Mezina, please, the vulva, is it the same, the vagina? I'm talking about the vagina. Okay, the, the, okay um, I'm asking this question because of a layman perspective, because yeah. some people wouldn't understand the vulva. So yeah. Can you come down for us to understand the vulva? Okay, so the vulva is basically the part of the pubic area mm -hmm. where the hair is and then the part that looks like the lip. So the outward part of your private area is called the vulva. Thank you. Yeah. Dina, I know that pregnant women do a lot of lab investigations. What are some of them and what is the importance of those numerous lab investigations? So for the laboratory investigations that a pregnant woman would have to do for the initial visit, there are two main ones. You do blood investigations and urine investigations. So for the blood investigations, you do your blood group. We would want to know what your blood group is, whether you're O, you're A, you're B, or you're AB. I would also want to know what your resource factor is, so that we will know whether that of your husband is the same as that of yours. Then we would also want to look at your circling status. We want to know whether you are circling positive or negative. When you're circling positive, there is another test that we'll have to do called HB electrophoresis. And this will tell us whether you are AS, which is a carrier, or SS, SC, or any of the circling disorders. Okay. Yeah. Then we will also look at other preventive laboratories. Before you talk about the other lab investigations, why do you do the circling test? And you even uh, said something about electrophoresis. What's, what's the importance of so the electrophoresis is done for patients or for pregnant women who are circling positive. Okay. And I'm saying that when you do the electrophoresis, we'll get to know whether you are a circling carrier or you actually have sickle cell disease. Okay. And sickle cell disease in itself hasn't got any complication on the pregnancy. It is with the mother. Okay. Because of the changes in pregnancy, they may get into crisis and others. Then for the baby that is yet to be born, we would want to investigate the, your husband as well. We want to know whether the husband is also circling positive, whether it's circling negative. If it's circling positive, is, it, is the person AS, SS, SC? And that would tell us how the baby would also be. Yeah. Aside from the circling test, what other lab investigations are carried out? We would want to know the infectious disease state of the client. So we do HIV tests, we do hepatitis B tests, and we do syphilis tests. All these are screenings so that we know whether the patient or the client has any of these infections or not. These investigations are very important because we would not want her to pass them on to the fetus or the baby. So what about the urine? So a urine routine examination is done and when we do these investigations we want to know whether there is glucose in the urine, whether there is protein in the urine, whether there is anything wrong with the kidneys of the patient. Nazine, I want you to educate us on scan during pregnancy. But then viewers, let's go for a quick break. When you come back, Nazine will educate us more on scan during pregnancy. I'm with my patient now. Her name is Ruth, and we want to find out how her antenatal care journey was. Mr. Ruth, it's the same. I'm not sure how I'm going to catch up with you. Oh, I'm not sure. I started antenatal, and I'm going to be here for my mommy. I'm going to try my first scan, and I'm going to try my second scan, and I'm going to try my second scan. But I'm going to try my third scan. Ena date no date ne wo miskan so no. Edu ye no ma wo. 
and a doctor say, yes, a midwife for say, you go doctor. Okay. And you go home doctor, and when a doctor say, you best have a man that date be you as well. Okay. So I date me do it, man. Woo. Okay. Me that so will feel. I feel the my worried. Say I don't know. Or baby, I to make him na me they do me so dear. To me to feel me buy you know. And a doctor say any obey any operation. Okay. You can't say no. Patch me yem shame kakra. Because me tea bida. Then know why you operation that now. Patch your dead, me ne bida. Okay. Me yem shame. And say ba sa no, only make a say sa midwife for only make a say. Ena makuma ba form. Okay. Ena yekwe yem operation. Yekwe yu yem ni abema. Okay. And see, any bed to your operation room more dear. Auntie, eh, ya kakra, but. Eh, ya, omu ya na na se omu ya. Actually, won't me in that house, ma ye yo, auntie. Mami bi, papa bi wo me chi, e dro. Auntie, ma, e dro ni kum mi hon nam. Okay. Auntie, e no a se ye, tri mi ye, kobe ye, tri mi ye, koba. Mi hon se ma ye, light. Te se, mi mu do no, abafo. Te se, ye akwa la no. E ye ye na, ye pushi mi kwa word. Okay. Me ne so te me no, na ma ye operation ye. Okay. Every day, na eh, ya trame. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, and I start to feel, and I a drone kakran kakra, kasa kakran kakra. It be it be it be, and I'm in the operation. It be. Okay. In this say no, who we are no, eh, what is sense is here? Oh, eh, yeah, mo, but we be any day. Say, ni mi ama o ba kuna, o be ma operation, to be fun sa, eh, yeah. But Yami had doom, me who ye. Why operation the door saying? Em, Pacho, Cecilia, me tea high. Ah, my quay be Cecilia and a mabe. And to wake up one mean sunny. Okay, a bassa and the first one. And what's all the two I dream will say? A doom when Yapo won't share die almost say, We are operation, we are a dear second one, no better me out. Okay, and to me bassa, maybe Musu dee, and Banessa, mom. And see, also do I drink to us when I hear back on me and a tosson. And what's all be catch real? Okay, you can't say, Come on, doctor, pay. I'm a woman, me and Sansu, me, and then she say, I am okay. Now say, I'm a quay, you can see. Okay, now quite been so now. Auntie Nancy Clinic, ASC now, or buying a poor. Oh, and mammy, so far you've no one so what's in the fee, what's in the fee, a titina. A becker say, ye have been a drew. But I'm saying, in Indian, I'm banning tea. When you're bar, I pay for a ANC, the extra I pay for no pay. A bed church or when you're my son, or befa, or be over CC, or one far. Midwife is super show. A drone in Yama, especially Moja drew a who here, pa, because I'm confirm me, you know. And now, my young won't to say first now, what you know. See, see, I'll ban to Natala, or my bar Moja drew. No, no, I born come more. We feel what to say. We did in Juma, open a year in Juma. So, how be a wa? No, my boss and a bay ya won't drink, drink, and my moja. Well, when your moja brew, so I friend be pin, I'm a friend be pin. Now I'm an uncle, so see on my show. I shall say no, I'm no better two, one month, eh, two months. A chill, we have for a year corner. Now, for the one by one week, one good timer. Ube wun tu cha wala scan ebe chese ube operation na na wankasa na ube wun ti apen for eh ribe esha apen for no e bo ame pa alright inti mtu mi ba clinic ni ni na don mu de mao ina uti mi ba alright 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 inti mi ba ni ni na okay this time we will be dasi why inti mi ba dasi alright so we will join Dina again for the continuation of the discussion. Thank you, Ruth, for sharing your antenatal story with us. So, Nesdaina, what is the number of scans that can be done during pregnancy? During pregnancy, you need a minimum of three scans. Okay. That is one scan in each trimester. Mm -hmm. So, in the first trimester, you take a scan, and this scan will help us to know where exactly the pregnancy is, whether it's in the womb or it's outside the womb, which okay. mostly is called an ectopic. Then, the scan, for the first scan will also help us to date the pregnancy. Okay. And when we get the correct dating, it will help us to be able to identify when the pregnancy is going post-dated. So the second scan you would take will be in the second trimester. 
and this usually is an anomaly scan so that it will let us know whether the baby you're carrying has developed any abnormality or not. Then a third scan is taken in the last trimester of the pregnancy. This will help us to know the position of the baby, how big the baby has grown, whether the water around the baby, which is the lyco, is very adequate. And the positioning of the baby would help us to know whether you, you could deliver vaginally or via cesarean section. Okay. And does high number of scans affect the baby and the mother? No. A high number of scans have got no effect on the baby and the mother. Because in the course of the pregnancy, aside from these three scans that I have mentioned, if there is any other thing your midwife or obstetrician would want to know, for example, when you come complaining you are bleeding, they would take a scan to know what exactly is causing the bleeding. And as a midwife, how do you motivate your clients or your patients to come to antenatal clinic? We motivate them by calling them. Okay. People feel happy when they hear that, oh, my midwife in the hostel has given me a call. Right. She's calling to check on me. Okay. She's calling to find out if I'm taking my medications, if I'm okay. We also visit them at home, which, home, which is home visits. Okay. Yes, yeah, so once you interact with them and they realize you care about them, okay. they tend to attend any visit you schedule with them. Wow, that's nice of you. Keep it up. Thank you. And here, so I want to know about the pregnancy school concept. How does it work? Because I've been hearing a lot of pregnant women. I'm going to pregnancy school and a whole lot. So can you explain it to us? So pregnancy school is basically putting a number of pregnant women together. So like you do in schools, students come together to learn. But with the pregnancy school, pregnant women are put together they come and then they share their experience. They also get to learn about things to expect in the pregnancy. We take a topic at a time. So because of that, you get to understand, really understand one topic at a time. For example, in an hour, we can be discussing how you would know when labor sets in. We can be discussing other topics like, what kind of foods will you eat? Are you supposed to eat so that you grow well and then your baby would also grow well? Okay. Yeah. Can they come with their partners? Yes, they can. Okay. You can come with your husband or your support person. They all will come to the pregnancy school because we don't want it to be restricted to only the pregnant women. We need education to go far. So any support person with them can join them for the pregnancy school. Okay. And I believe they share their experiences with you, pregnancy experiences with you, some of the misconceptions about pregnancy with you, right? Yes, they do. You get to hear funny stories. Okay. Like, in my village, mm -hmm. we don't eat eggs when we are pregnant. Okay. The reason is that when you eat eggs when you are pregnant, your child will tend to become a thief. <laughs> yes, you get okay. to hear others saying, we don't take snails. When you take snails, you give birth to a baby that is drooling all the time. Okay. And because of that, they actually would not be eating eggs. They don't want to take snails. Some even say okra. Okay. But then when you come for pregnancy school, we tend to educate them on the need to take the eggs. Eggs will not make your baby a thief okay. or your child a thief. It's how you bring them up at home. Okay. That will make them better or worse children. Thank you very much for educating us on Antony and You're welcome. We hope to see you soon. Okay. Viewers, I believe you've learned a lot about Antenatal Clinic and I've also learned so much about it. Please try as much as possible to visit Antenatal Clinic during pregnancy. Join me next week as we continue to talk about issues concerning women's health. Have a good evening.